So yes, so we are on the pricing um, for newbies with Every Stem. I'm here with Luann and a couple of the other Black Girl Florists. We are really excited. Um, this session is specifically for newbies, which is an organization of florists who has been working with flowers in any capacity um, for less than two years. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. Um, feel free to mute yourselves um, unless you would like to share um, and then we'll get started. Um, I do want to introduce Luann. Um, she it has been a fantastic um, partner of Black Girl Flores since right around the time we started, um, just sharing her platform and giving her background on what it looks like to price for profitability, not just to do the event, but to actually come home with some coin because that's what we're doing this coin and then creative outlet. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, one thing about this newbie group that's really special is that you guys are the juxtaposition between the veterans, which have been here in, in floral for 10 or more years. So you have two groups who are essentially in the same zone as far as discovery, veterans with like, what's next and how do I leave my legacy? And newbies with what's next and how do I leave my legacy, right? So it's the same thing. And this group is um, especially in particular, um, my favorite group because I feel like we have so much opportunity to pour back into floors that are just starting out. Um, the information that we give and share with you all you will be able to continue to share with the floors that come behind you as you progress in your career. Um, so thank you so much for being here. We did have our newbie tenure group last month for those of you who joined. Um, it was a great time. I mean, we we really connected. A lot of the floors had a, a very similar, um, similar places that they were in their career, which is really excellent. Um, and we also talked about building recipes and that's why in a lot of the communications, you saw me say, hey, bring your recipes, bring your recipes. And that's because I asked each florist to come up with a base recipe that they could just have in their back pocket that they could price out and understand what the profit margin on that piece was so that they go, can go on and make other recipes and do other events and things like that. Um, did everybody bring their recipes? It's okay. If you didn't, that's fine, that's fine. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'll go ahead and let Luann introduce herself and then we'll get started. Hey everybody, thank you Valerie for having me today. I'm really excited about having this chat because you know, every florist, doesn't matter how long you've been doing this or what your background is, pricing for a profit is really not something that comes naturally to any of us. And it's something we really need to work on because most of us who become florists, and I say most of us, but it's probably really all of us, we have a caring heart. We love beautiful things. We want to help people. Like those are some of our just natural tendencies. And so pricing for a profit and making money off of those things is kind of almost a little bit counterintuitive <laughs> to our nature of being like, hey, I want to go ahead and make beautiful things in the world and make people happy and bring joy to people through flowers. And, you know, that's wonderful. We all want to do that, but we also need to pay the bills. We need to pay our rent and we need to be able to make sure that we're making a profit because it is really hard work being a florist. And I know this firsthand because I've been a florist since 2005 and I owned my own flower shop here in Austin, Texas from 2006 all the way up to 2018. So in 2018, I sold my flower shop to the new owner. She's still there. And I say she's the new owner, but she's boned it for like <laughs> almost five years now, which is kind of wild in my mind. I feel like I was just there the other day. Um, but when I sold my flower shop, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do next. I knew I didn't want to be at the flower shop five or six days a week. And I found someone who was really interested and talented and wanted to buy it. So I just thought it was the natural progression of selling the flower shop and kind of seeing what was next. And so I started freelancing for a bunch of people in Austin who had flower shops because it was just a natural thing that you fall into. They're like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Come help us. And I started seeing how many people really struggled with pricing and ordering flowers and figuring out how many flowers they needed to order 
for a particular design or for a particular event. And so I talked to my husband about this idea that I had of taking this spreadsheet that we had built in Excel and turning it into a software. Because I've seen other florists who have like these spreadsheets that they'll share or they'll sell, but formulas break and things in spreadsheets don't always work right. But in a software, it's built into the back end. So you can't really break the formulas. So we decided to go ahead and test out building a software that would help florists build recipes, price for a profit, and really actually start to make money on every event and know in real time as they were working on building their designs, whether it was for a wedding or for a delivery or something like that, that they were actually going to make money on the design that they were creating. And so that was in about, gosh, right around the time you started, Valerie, right? It was probably around 2000, 2001 is when we launched Every Stem. And um, now it's been about two and a half years since we've had the software live and it's growing every day. I was just telling Valerie, we had two, 10 new members join just the other day in one day. So it's growing really well and people really love it. It's saving them time and it's helping newer designers like yourselves who have less experience in the industry start making money on the front end early instead of those things that you hear so many stories of florists who have maybe the ones that are in that veteran group you know, saying, oh, well, for the first three years, I didn't make any money. <laughs> we all hear those stories. And it's because technology wasn't there back then to be able to make this work a lot easier and faster. And some of the fundamental information of how to price and how to do those things wasn't really readily available because we didn't have such great community um, availability across the world and across the country like we do now with our different florist groups and Instagram and Facebook and all those kinds of things. So the fact that now that you guys are starting your businesses and really starting to get into floral, it's actually a really great time to do that because there's so much information out there that you can use to your benefit to start becoming profitable right at the get-go instead of saying, oh, I have to work for three years and earn my keep till I can start making a living and making money. So that's kind of my real reason for building Every Stem is because I knew that a lot of us were not making enough money. Some of us were leave, even losing money. And I had this thing that I knew I could create that would help people with it. And so that's kind of where uh, I'm at right now, just trying to make it the best recipe building profit, you know, pricing for a profit software that's out there, keeping it affordable so that all florists can use it. And just kind of having my own little corner of the world where software is concerned, because most of the other ones are, I don't know if you guys have looked in any softwares, but a lot of them are really expensive and really elaborate and really big. And um, every stem is not all those things. So I think that's one of the reasons Valerie wanted uh, you guys to take a look at how we do it in every stem, because it's just a little bit more straightforward and focused on the really the most important part of um, running a flower business that behind the scenes is making money and a healthy profit. Awesome. Thank you so much, Luann. Um, I have used every stem for my events and it just changes the game and understanding what I need to charge for. And it pulls me out of the mindset that I'm just charging for flowers and puts me into the CEO mindset of, okay, labor, okay, transportation, okay, labor again, because guess what? Labor is really expensive. Okay. You know, and, and it's really important because all those pieces contribute to the final and getting this piece onto somebody's table. And it's sometimes we don't think about that. Um, and what I really also love about every stem is that it makes you really focus on the dollar amount that you want to take home, because guess what? It's okay to make a bazillion dollars. It's okay to make a lot of money. And like Luann said, a lot of our character is just loving, sharing, giving, which is great but you want to make sure that that is what you truly want to do, right? Like you want to be able to be the one that is in control of what you're giving and sharing and not the other way around. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right on in. Um, Luann, did, I shared my screen. Do you need to share your screen? I can share mine because I set up a couple examples in the software that we can look at if that's okay 
we can do it that yeah, way. Yeah, let's do it. Let me know if you if you have issues getting in there. If I can do that. And the other thing that you said, Valerie, just now was that, you know, when we're sharing, we're giving, and we're using our talents to help others, it's wonderful. But what I have learned over the years from meeting florists all over the world using the software is that if you're not charging enough, over time, that kind of turns into starting to resent your clients or resenting your employees or your team or, you know, kind of getting frustrated because you're not making enough money. And so even though you're really giving a lot, you're not getting enough in return. So it's kind of finding that happy balance of saying, yes, I'm a giving person, but what I'm giving has value and I need to make sure that I'm getting compensated for that fairly, you know? Correct, correct, correct. So let me share this. I'm going to see if I can share my desktop and then switch over to the, um, to the, okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So we talked about a couple of different things um, and I'm not going to give you guys like a tutorial on the software. I'm going to just talk about some different ways that you can price. You can use the software to do this. You can also do this by hand or in a spreadsheet like a Google Doc if you want to. You don't have to use every stem to do these you know, types of um, equations and making sure that you're making money. Every stem makes it a little faster and a little easier um, and kind of automates it. But you can still do these same kind of things you know, by hand or in a spreadsheet. So it's not going to be like a tutorial, um, but I'll kind of go through some of the things on how it works as we talk about these ideas. Um, but there were four different examples that Valerie and I had talked about that we thought were really valuable times when every newer floral designer needs to think about what, how they're pricing their designs. So the first one was we were talking about retail designs. And I'm not sure how many of you are kind of leaning into more doing daily floral or retail floral, or how many of you are leaning more into event floral, but like raise your hand if you're doing more event floral or like designs for weddings and things like that. And then if you're doing daily or deliveries or things like that, pop-ups. Okay, great. So we have a good mix. So the nice thing about this is that every stem does work for multiple different kinds of businesses. And the first one is thinking about how you can build a retail floral menu on your website without being reliant on something like a Teleflora or um, a POS system like FTD or something like that, where they're kind of forcing you to do their designs because you don't make as much money through those wire services. And if you build a really good um, kind of community platform within your community and people know who you are, you're going to get more of that local um kind of referral and and repeat based business. And uh, when I had my flower shop, I had a really great core of maybe like 100 to 200 regular customers who would buy for every holiday, every birthday, every important thing in their lives, anytime they needed to send flowers to someone in the Austin area, they were coming to me. And so if you can build that into your business when you're doing retail without having to be reliant on like an FTD, then you're going to make a lot more money. So we'll talk about that one first. The next one is going to be about wedding pricing and recipes when you haven't yet created an invoice for your client. So how can you quote for a client or create a proposal for a client with healthy prices on the front end? So that way, when you go to actually do the recipe six months later after the client's booked and it's time to order the flowers, you're not squeezing yourself into a tight recipe because you didn't price high enough on the front end, which is one of the biggest things that I see with a lot of wedding designers. We guess the price. Oh, that'll be a $200 arrangement. And then when we actually go to do the order like a month before the wedding, we're like, whoa, this is not a $200 arrangement, but I promised that to my client. Now I got to fill it out. You know, we don't want to disappoint the client. So what do we end up doing? We end up losing money because we're going to fill it to value to make the client happy and we're not going to make as much. So if we price on the front end using every stem, you don't have to price every single design and whether it's retail or event work, it's kind of the same mentality. Build some general ideas of what you need to charge for certain sizes or certain styles that you want to do, and then have that in your back pocket. So that way, when you get a request for a certain kind of design, you can say, okay, 
I'm pretty confident that that's going to be 300. Because last year, I guess 200, I'm not going to do that to myself again, you know? So it starts to build that real good confidence and kind of that muscle memory of knowing, okay, I kind of have an idea of what I need to charge for this. And then the next one is wedding pricing and recipes when you've already shared the prices with the clients. So this is, you've already priced this out. Now you have to fit that design into what you charged. What if the prices change? What if, you know, something about the wedding has changed or the design or something has changed? How do you deal with that? And how can you really kind of be smart about adjusting maybe certain flower varieties or things like that to make sure that you're still on budget and you're fulfilling the client's ideal, you know, look and style, but you're not going way over budget, you know, just because you promised them a certain type of flower or something like that. And then the last one is when you practice your design work. And um, I know Valerie was just talking about kind of having that standard recipe for a, a small, simple arrangement um, that you kind of have in your back pocket and you know what the pricing is. When you're practicing design, a lot of us tend to like make something beautiful and walk away. And that's wonderful. But if we want to make money in our business, what if we practice to make something beautiful and then figured out how much we need to charge for it? It's like a totally different game, right? Like when we're practicing, we have the time. Usually we have an extra five minutes. Take that extra five minutes and go, okay, let me just add up what I put in here. How much time did I spend to make it? And what could I really charge for it? Okay, this arrangement looks like a $150 design. I've done the math. Yep. Now, would my client pay $150 for this? And then you can kind of say to yourself, okay, well, if they wouldn't, what could I do to change it to get it maybe to 125 or whatever you need to do? So it's really nice to kind of think about those different applications because then pricing and making money and all those things that are like uh, a little bit cringe, like you're like, I don't want to deal with this. I hate these numbers. It makes it a little bit more fun because you're putting it into an application that kind of ties into the, the, the parts of floral design that we all really love, you know. So let me take a look at the dashboard. I'm going to open up every stem. Um, the dashboard is actually where all the flower orders and events live. So all the flower recipes are kind of in each one of these events. And the first one we're going to take a look at is the retail menu without becoming dependent on Teleflora. So let's take a look. I created a fall online menu. And in this online menu, I'm going to have an offering of a four inch size vase, a six inch size vase, an eight inch size vase, and maybe some wrapped bouquets that I'm going to take some pictures. I'm going to build some designs. I'm going to put it on my website and I'm going to have a really nice select offering for what I'm going to sell to my clients to kind of keep it narrow so that I'm not trying to, in, you know, have 8,000 different kinds of flowers in my flower shop and kind of sell the things that I know my clients are going to love. So let's open that one up. When you first look at every stem, there's some information um, on the summary page. But the first thing we're going to look at is the page called Vase Arrangements. And each of these pages, the one called Vase Arrangements and the one called Hand Tied Bouquets, I've titled those pages. So every page can be customized in every stem for your events. So for this first one, I'm going to go ahead and kind of tighten this up a little bit and zoom out so we can kind of take a look at the whole picture here. But I've got a four inch cylinder vase arrangement and I wanna charge $125 for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put at the very bottom of my recipe that I wanna charge $125. And I'm gonna build my recipe with all the flowers that I wanna use in that design and it's going to show me how much the cost is for all those flowers at wholesale, because I've entered those prices into my system. And then I'm going to add my supplies. So I've added $8 for my supplies, which is a simple, small four inch vase. And maybe I like to do a little tape grid on the top so I can put water in there for my daily arrangements. That way the designers or the uh, recipient can kind of change the water out and it's fresh. So I don't have a lot of cost in my supplies, but I want to make sure that I add those. And, um, and then let me go ahead and unhide this labor fee. Then I'm going to go ahead and add also my 30% labor fee. So I'm taking the cost of the flowers, 
I'm multiplying that times three for my markup. And then I'm adding 30% on top of that for my labor fee. So every STEM is calculating this automatically for me. So I don't have to do this math. That's the really nice part about every STEM. I'm not sitting there going, okay, $2.50 times three plus 250 times three plus, you know, it's going to go ahead and do all that math for me. And then it's going to add $8 for my supplies. And it's going to tell me that I need to charge $124.30 for this design. So I just put my recipe in and I put in how much I want to charge for my labor and anything for my supplies. And then the system actually spits out how much I need to charge. So there's really no second guessing on your retail designs because you can easily see that you don't want to charge any less than the $124.30. So I put in the quoted price box, which is kind of the amount that you want to charge the client. I decided I'm going to just go ahead with 125 because it's right on the, the retail value. Now, if my prices change a little bit or something flux, you know, kind of up or down, I've kind of put in the highest prices that I think my wholesalers are going to charge me for the season. So I tend to kind of put a little buffer in there. And I know a lot of us as newer designers were like, oh man, this was $6.90 last week. And now it's $7.90 this week. And last week it was $4.90. I like to just go with that highest price because then if it's a little bit less, I make a little bit more money, but I know that my client at this kind of recipe and the highest prices, they're going to be pretty happy with this design in a four inch vase. So I went ahead and went across and added each vertical column here is its own recipe. So I've got one for a four inch cylinder at $125. My next one is a six inch cylinder at $265. So that's a pretty big price jump. But in retail floral design, you really want to make sure that when you're putting things on your website or you're pricing them out, you want to have a pretty big difference in the different pricing and the sizes of the designs. That way, the client can really see that there's a different value. Um, I like to, when I used to do the pictures on our website, I used to put either like a coffee cup with a cute little design, or I would put like a little ruler that was really pretty. I got one like a brass ruler from um, Etsy or somewhere. And I would lay that out in the photo with the arrangement so that people could see how big it was. Because sometimes people look at those pictures online and there's nothing. The only thing in the picture is the flower arrangement. And they're like, is this tiny or is this really big? They really don't have that perspective. So that's a really great little kind of tip on like making the pricing uh, varied enough and then kind of having that um, price difference enough between each of your designs. I think they say 30% difference between each design as you go up in price. Um, now, give or take a little bit, you know. Um, so our next design is a six inch cylinder. I've built out my recipe and I've got a price of $264.01 according to the software. And so I'm gonna go ahead and charge 265. But let's say I decide that I forgot to add my eucalyptus in this design. And I really wanna put some eucalyptus in here because I wanna make sure there's enough greenery. If I go in here and I put in a quarter of a bunch, that would be 0.25 of a bunch, I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And you're going to see that at the bottom of the screen, this number went negative and that the retail value that the system is saying I should charge is actually higher than what I'm planning to charge. So the price is now 273.76. So just by changing that one flower from zero to 0.25 of a bunch, I've kind of gone over my budget. So it's really easy to see that as you adjust those quantities in every stem, that it's going to change the pricing. Um, so what you want to do is maybe I added that. Maybe I want to take something else away. Maybe I want to do just two sweet peas off to one side instead of three. So that way I can get that in there and maybe one less ranunculus so that I can get my greenery in there. And now I'm back on my budget. So it's really easy to kind of see those numbers, guess um, 
and end kind of that guesswork that you're doing on like, how much do I need to charge? And then once you've built that out now, whether it's this exact recipe or some other similar recipe for the next season, you can easily swap out the flowers here for things that are going to be available in the fall or things that are going to be available next spring or summer. And then as you want to figure out how much you're going to buy, you can actually put in the top how many of each design you want to make. So if this was for Valentine's Day and you knew you wanted to sell 10 six inch cylinders and once you sold those 10, you were going to say those are sold out and move on to the next option. You can put a 10 up here and the software will actually calculate how many of each bunch you need to buy to build all 10 of those recipes. So it's really straightforward for building those kind of retail flower orders and handling some of that pricing for retail designs. Um, do you guys have any questions about that before I go on to the next uh, example? I had one. Are you able to save drafts as well? Like say if you don't want to, you want to save this, but you might want to come back to it, but you don't want this to be the final one. Can you save like versions of this? Yes, you sure can. Okay. So let's say we wanted to just leave this the way it was now. And maybe this was our fall version, but we're also working on our spring version for next year. I just want to get ahead of the game. Or maybe I want to make some adjustments once I get my final pricing from the wholesaler on this one. We can go ahead and it does save every time you make a change, but we can go ahead and just click the save button, make sure it's saved. And then when we go back to the dashboard, there's this really cool little button off to the right hand side that says um, copy. And uh, when you click on that, it's going to let you make like a save as in a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. So you're going to keep the original one and then you're going to have a new one. So if we wanted to say final prices, maybe we want to go ahead and just update it that way. We can go ahead and click submit. And now I have my original version and my one that says final prices. So it's really nice because if I'm building something for next season, I can just keep making a copy of this and like reiterating it, changing it, developing it, making it better. And so that's a really nice question because it's like, how do I get the most out of using this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and you can even create templates. So if you have like an online menu template, you can kind of lay out the basics of it and then kind of make a copy of that. Um, so you can definitely do some of that. That's a great question. Uh, did anybody else have any questions about that? Okay, cool. And this is probably on your agenda, but can you quickly just um, review the library piece? Oh, yeah. Um, I really Definitely. want the florist to kind of see what that's like. And this is why it's important to review your um, receipts and your invoices so that you can constantly update this area if you need to, because this is where you're going to be pulling from or the information is pulling from. Yeah. So we saw those flowers kind of down the left-hand side of the order um, or of the recipes that we were building. And we see the prices here. Well, where did those kind of appear from? Um, there's the dashboard, which is where all your orders exist and all your flower recipes. But there's also a flower library or an item library. And so that is where you're going to put in all your flower names, the vendors you're buying them from, the wholesale prices you're paying for them, and then what markup you're gonna use and how many stems come in a pack. So the nice thing about the flower library is that as you build it out, it becomes your personal place to kind of come back and take a look at ideas for, you know, oh, I've got a yellow wedding coming up. Let me go ahead and type in the word yellow. And now I can see all the yellow flowers that I have in my library and what vendors they're from and kind of what I paid for them probably the last time I bought them. So it's really nice because this way you're not going online and just kind of trying to find flower ideas. You're looking through here and saying, okay, these are actually flowers that I like know I can get. Um, and so you can build this out a couple of different ways. Um, you can kind of get a nice pricing list from your local wholesaler and kind of start with that pricing. Um, or you can pull some of the last few invoices that you've gotten if you've been buying flowers lately and put in those flowers that you've recently used. Or if you have some events coming up and you know, okay, I need to kind of do a fall wedding in November that needs, you know, copper beach and quicksand roses and, 
you know, you can ask your wholesaler, hey, can I get some pricing for these flowers that I'm going to be doing for my upcoming events and then put those into the system. So that way, when you go to build your orders, those will be in there for you. Um, and it's really easy to kind of start creating an item. You just click on the create item button up on the left-hand side and um, you put in the name of the flower. So let's say we're doing something like uh, kiwi vine and we're going to do, um, let's say we're going to do a short uh, and I'm going to put a one after it because I think I already have this flower in my in my library. Um, the vendor name, I'm going to say Austin Flower Company because they're my local wholesaler. And now for the price, I'm going to go ahead because Kiwi Vine kind of comes in this big roll. I'm going to go ahead and put the price in here for the entire bunch because it doesn't really come in a 10 stem pack or a 25 stem pack. So in this case, let's say it's $16 for the entire roll at wholesale cost. And um, I'm going to use my primary markup. Every stem is equipped with two different markups. And you can decide what those are um, in each event. So if you want to do different markups for different things, you can. But most of our designers that use every stem stick with the primary markup for all their flowers and their greenery. Usually that's a three or a four times markup. So you're taking the cost of the flower and multiplying it times three or the cost of the flower multiplying it times four. And then for the secondary markup, that's what we typically use for all the hard goods. So your vases your mechanics, any rental items, if you're doing weddings, um, things like that are gonna be under that secondary markup. And most of the florists that use every stem typically stick between like a two and a three times markup for all those hard goods items, because typically we're not really processing those as much. Um, a lot of times if they're rental items for weddings, we get them back so we can use them again. So we tend to mark those up a little bit lower. Um, I do know some florists that just do everything at one markup and they don't wanna be bothered switching between two markups. That's totally up to you as you establish, establish your business and figure out what's best for you. But um, it is um, available if you wanna do the two different markups. So we'll stick with primary since this is a flower. And then we're going to go ahead and pick bunch. So there's an option for stem and there's an option for bunch. Since we put the price in for the entire bunch up here and we really don't know how many stems come in a bunch. This is something we're going to kind of cut up and use as pieces. We're going to just do it as portions of a bunch. So we would say if we wanted to buy half a bunch, we would put in 0.5 of a bunch. So we're just going to go ahead and pick bunch. And then that stems per pack line goes away and we can save it to the library. So it's really easy to save different varieties of flowers. So if I had a tall kiwi vine, I could just change the name there. I could change the price to $22 and I can go ahead and save that one to my library. And then if I had like curly willow and it's tall, I know that that's going to be, you know, $18 a bunch and I can save that one to my library. So I saved three flowers already. It's really easy to just kind of Leave the name of the flower. If it's ranunculus, you can put in red, yellow, white, green. They're all going to be probably the same price and from the same vendor. So it's really easy to kind of add a bunch of flowers at once. Um, sometimes I'll say to our members like, hey, go ahead and just one night add all your ranunculus. Mm -hmm. And then the next night, add all your snapdragons. And then the next night, add all your stock. And before you know it, you've got like 150 flowers in your library that you can easily add and, you know, adjust later on. So. Uh, any questions about how that works uh, or how the library kind of saves the flowers and, and hard goods for you? Pretty straightforward. I know it's like so easy. I mean, we did really try to make this a very simple, you know, program. So that way it's fun and it's not so complicated. You're not digging around trying to go through six different layers of folders to try to find what you want to do. It's like a very user-friendly kind of little thing we got going here. Um, so that's how the library works. And then I wanted to kind of show you guys an example of a wedding, because I think it's really important to think about when we're creating invoices for clients. Um, and, you know, if we're doing retail, we do custom things too, where a client is asking us for something specific and we need to kind of price that out. Um, when we're thinking about quoting for something in the future, we want to make sure that we're leaving a little bit of a buffer. 
And so um, let me take a look at which example I created for that. So I have one here that's called 2024 minimums for weddings. And it's just pricing for events. So this isn't really for a specific client. This is for a florist to say, I want to figure out based on the designs that I want to make, the clients that I want to kind of attract to my business, what kind of pricing do I need to put out there to make sure that I'm attracting the higher end clients that I want, that I'm kind of um, making sure that I'm pricing you know, fairly, but also, you know, competitively in the market with designers that are, you know, maybe have more experience, but doesn't mean that they're doing better work. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of designers that are doing one year in, they are creating phenomenal work, and they should not be getting paid less than somebody who's been doing it for 10 years. Yep. You're doing the same beautiful work, you're putting in the same beautiful effort. So there's no reason to make less money, you know, than somebody who's been doing it for longer. Um, so for this example, what I did was I created what I like to call functional flowers. So you're going to see here on the left-hand side, base flower. I like to call that like the flower that I want to use as my, my base, like hydrangeas or sedum or something like even um, dianthus or something like that, that has like a nice, um, you know, even rice flower could be pretty, whatever it is that I want to do as my like kind of thing that's going to like kind of ground the design. And then I've got dancer flower. Those are the like butterfly ranunculus and the cosmos and things that float around, filler flower, focal flower, and so on. So you'll see, and I have my bouquet supplies as a hard good item. So you'll see that this is more of a generic recipe. It's not specifically a Tibet white rose or an anthurium medium pink. It's really just... The theory of color goes away. We don't have to worry about the colors matching. We don't have to worry about, we're just thinking about the design, the shape, the size, and how many flowers I need to kind of fill out this recipe to make a client happy. So this is more of a generic kind of concept, but because we have that copy feature that we were just talking about, and we have a swap feature, you can actually swap these flowers out for real specific flowers later on in another version of this event. So by building these generic recipes, you can actually kind of start some of your work ahead of time and not have to wait to the last minute when the client's like needing a quote really quickly, you know? Yes. Let's look at the person. Really quickly, Luann, I'm yeah. back up. Uh -huh. I just want to point out to everybody that this is where your base um, recipe that we talked about would belong. Um, where you would have the two buds, three fillers, two greens. This is where it goes. Yep. So if you're doing retail designs, this might say something like, you know, uh, like we saw in the last example, four inch cylinder, eight inch cylinder, uh, tall, you know, whatever, medium size, whatever you want to put. But for wedding, we're going to say we want to put in three different potential bridal bouquets. We want a small eight inch diameter bridal bouquet. We want a 12 inch diameter, more of a medium bridal bouquet. And we want a 16 inch large. And so what I did was I went ahead and built the recipe for the eight inch. And the system is telling me that I need to charge $245 for this. But this is my 2024 idea of what I want to charge for my client. So instead of charging exactly 245, I went ahead and bumped it up and decided to charge 275. Because that way, six months from now, when these prices tend to go up or things change, or maybe I do want to add a little something else to this design for this particular client, I have that nice buffer. Maybe they want to add silk ribbon or something special. I know that even if I add a special ribbon, an extra special flower, I'm still going to be within my profit margin and a healthy budget. Um, even if I add, you know, another $30 to this design. So that's really where planning for the future and thinking about making sure that you're pricing high enough for six months from now or eight months from now can be really helpful. Um, so if we did the same thing with the 12 inch diameter medium bouquet, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bump up the quantities. So I'll do three of the base flower as well. Maybe I'll do four of the filler flower. And maybe for my focal flower, that would probably be for me like a rose. Um, 
I love using roses and bridal bouquets. Like everybody wants a rose in their bouquet mostly. So let's say we're going to do like, you know, nine of those. And then maybe we'll do six dancers, six line flowers, and a half a bunch of greenery. Now I have two different kinds of greenery in here. I have a regular and a fancy. And I like fancy greenery. I like finding something that's like a little bit wild or fun to throw in there. So I have two different kinds. Um, you can kind of put that in just as like a placeholder. Something I want to buy at the market that's gorgeous, that's $20 a bunch. You don't even have to know what it is right now. It doesn't matter. It's just something for the future. So you can kind of use that as a placeholder. Um, so maybe we'll say like a half a bunch of that as well. So now when we look at that, the system is telling us that that's going to be $82 at cost plus our markup and our 30% labor fee. And I already put in my bouquet supplies item up above, so I don't have to put any supplies in down here. I used um, an actual line item to put that in. Um, so it's telling me $313. So I'm not going to charge my client $313. I'm going to maybe say, you know, let's go with, 345 or 350. And that way we know that there's that wiggle room. Do you think that would be helpful for you guys to kind of think about things in that kind of more not worrying about color or not worrying about, you know, some of those things that clients want, just thinking about it in more of kind of the general sense of like filling out the size and shape of the design? Awesome. Um, and then obviously what you can do is you can do that throughout, you know, any kind of a design you want to create. So I have some ceremony things set up here, reception things. And then I recently did an example on Instagram where I had three different kinds of bud vase or um, like lounge table designs. And I was like, what would I charge for these? So I had a big bulb vase, like a big bulbous vase with some tulips and amaranthus. And then I had like a little cylinder vase filled with cute flowers. And then I had a trio of bud vases. And I wanted to just look at the recipe and the pricing for each of those and say, what would my minimum be? If I wanted to say lounge table, cocktail table, you know, something like that, and know that it would kind of cover all three of these styles without me having to say, if you want a cylinder vase on that table, it's going to be $58. But if you want a bud vase trio, it's going to be $55. This way, if I look at all three of these, I can just say my highest one is $65. So I'm just going to go with $65 for all three options. And then that way I'm covered. If one of my vases breaks, if some of my flowers come in moldy, if something doesn't work out right, I need to spend an extra three hours with one client that I am not really getting paid for because their mother is a PETA. And like, I know they're driving me nuts, but I have to help them out and get them through it. I know that I'm going to make a little bit of extra money on a couple of those designs. So feeling that confidence build in knowing that these are your real numbers that you need to charge. You can't change these numbers. This retail value line is the line that the system is telling you how much you have to charge to hit your profit margin. So going no lower then these numbers, you're going to be safe, especially if you're kind of estimating some of these prices for your flowers, you know, on the higher end of what you've seen for the season. You know, we don't want to say, oh, well, we've seen carnations at 72 cents, but we've also seen them at $1.29. We don't want to put them in here at 72 cents. We want to put them in at $1.29. That's where we're figuring that highest price. Um, so something like this, where you're taking some different ideas, like a partial arch, you know, with maybe three different clusters of flowers, a full covered arch, but like, you know, natural coverage and a really lush abundant arch. If you build one recipe for each of those within every stem, like we have here with the three um, columns, then you can say to your clients, if you want something that's just partial coverage, it's going to be about this much. If you want something with full coverage, it's going to be about this much. And if you want a lush abundant look, it's going to be this much. Dealing with the exact flowers and the color theory and all that stuff, you can do that later. But this way, you're not undercutting by just guessing at that price. You have some kind of general established idea of what you need to charge. 
with math backing you up behind it, which is really nice. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions about kind of that thought process? Um, or um, does that kind of help you kind of, because I know recipes can be really frustrating. So does thinking about it in this way kind of give you ideas to kind of take your business and do more recipe work? Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> this is very Thank helpful. Much. And, um, very we helpful. Just, Luann, we have just a few minutes left. Uh, the last thing I'd really love for you to share with everyone is that details box. Um, oh, Yes pieces in there that really helped me with my events mm -hmm. and really helped me to be able to get the amount of money that I needed to execute properly. So that, yeah. that event details box was very, 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 uh, very clutch. Yeah. So let's take a look at an event that's got like a full wedding in it. Um, and we can go over this pretty quickly. And then if anybody has any questions for me afterwards, or you want to learn more about the software, we do have a YouTube channel with lots of tutorials about how the software actually works. And then I'm happy to do a Zoom call with anybody that wants to see more. Uh, I didn't want to go too technical on this tonight because I want you guys to get some value out of it, even if you're not using the software yet. Um, but certainly we can do more of this in the future as well. Um, so I think what Valerie's talking about, you're talking about the summary, right, Valerie, where it kind of rolls so. everything up. Yep. Yeah. So once it you're built out, it might be that event details box at the top. I'm not sure. I think that might be, no, it's Or not. the profit summary. No, Profit but I do want to and do that one. The, it's the, maybe it's the fee calculator. Oh, with the delivery fee and everything. Yeah. Yes. All, yes. Is it that one? Okay. I think yeah. so. We'll go over, we'll go over like the rundown of it real quick. So let's say you're doing an event and you've kind of built out all your recipes. You've got your bridal bouquet here, your groom's boutonniere. Everything looks good. Everything's positive differences. Our prices are healthy. I might even actually go back in and add some more flowers on this one because I don't really want to give them $64 worth when I'm charging them a hundred. I might add to that, but we'll say it's good for now. Um, and then same thing with our reception and our staircase design. When we look at our summary page, it's going to total all of these recipes up for us to be able to order our flowers. So we know that in the personals page, we're not using any Alstroemeria, but in the reception page, we're using 21 stems. And so we're gonna have to buy 21 stems for our recipes. We're gonna have nine extra stems because we can't buy 21 from the wholesaler, right? We have to buy them in packs of 10. So the system is telling us our order total is gonna be 30 stems. So the system is adding up all these designs, all these flowers, so you don't have to think about that, telling you how many you're gonna have left over of each variety. And then when you scroll down to the bottom, it's gonna show you all the numbers very clearly on the total overall of the event. So if this is a wedding, or if this is like a Valentine's Day order for a retail shop, um, or if this is a weekly standing order for a retail shop, this is gonna show you, if you're planning on charging the client $4,200, we're planning on our costs of all our flowers and our hard goods that have been entered in here. We're spending $1,000 um, and our profit margin is gonna be 75%. So this is really nice because it gives you that like total just roll up of what you're doing, shows you how much you're planning to charge the client for labor. That's that 30% amount that we were seeing at the bottom of each recipe. It's actually um, totaling that up and giving you an amount. So if we were hiring three freelancers and we were paying them $300 each, are we making enough money on this labor fee? So this is where Valerie, uh, what she was just saying is coming into play. We can also then add extra fees on top of what we're charging just in the price of each design in this fee calculator. This and the fee is calculator. my favorite thing. <laughs> I love this so much because for me, these were line items that I accounted for after my markup. So sometimes people will say, oh, I have a three times markup, a four times markup because I do flower, labor, um, transportation, invest back on my business. No, 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 no. You have the three times markup then labor and transportation and everything after. 
That's how you're able to have a profitable business so that you can continue to do these events. And if you want to leave your big girl job or go in seasonally, you have the space to do that. So if you take anything away from this call, friends, please, after your markup, the line items that Luann's going to talk about, you're going to add after the markup. Everyone yes. good there? Does everyone get that? Great. Yep. So once we're looking at this fee calculator, as Valerie said, we want to think about adding the fees that we need to add to cover, you know, our work on the actual event itself. So when Valerie says, you know, using that markup, if we're doing a three times markup or a four times markup, that's covering the cost of our flowers and our supplies. It's covering our expenses, our day to day expenses, our business expenses. But the labor and the work and things that we're doing on the actual event, this is where we can charge for those things in addition. So the every stem quote up here, this is the number that um, we're charging our client for the entire wedding um, before we have our fees or our tax or anything like that. So this is being calculated by the software based on the price that we put in at the bottom of each recipe that we're charging the client. And um, if we needed to change it for any reason, we can actually adjust it here, but typically it's already calculated for you, so you don't have to change it. Um, and then it's going to allow you to add fees. So we can go ahead and add the fees that we need to add. Um, I like to call my kind of setup delivery consultation fee, I like to call it like an all-inclusive fee. And I have like a really nice kind of sexy wording that people understand, like it's not just... I'm going, I'm driving from my flower shop to where your wedding is and I'm delivering the flowers. It's all the times we talk on the phone, all the times I spend sourcing your flowers, all the time I'm spending thinking about your color theory, all that, that's got to, that's got to get charged for somewhere, right? That cannot be free. So what we have to do is put that in as a fee. So I like to do typically 20 to 30% for that, depending on the design and work that we're doing. Um, if it's like an a la carte wedding or something really basic, it might not need to be 30%, 20% might be enough because you've done it a lot before. But if it's somebody that wants custom work and you're drawing a sketch and you're renting a scissor lift and you're doing all the things, then you got to charge for all that stuff so you have enough money to you know pay everybody. Um, and then the next fee I like to typically charge, like if you have to do... Um, uh, anything that has to do with like a freelance team or you want to feed people, you want to, you know, have all that kind of stuff, you know, you can add that in here as well. So you can call it like meals, expenses, whatever you want to call it. And this is not something you're going to show the client. This is just for you to add it all up. So you get the total. They don't need to know that this is what we're charging them for. So let's say we need to charge, you know, a $250 fee for that. And then let's say we need to rent a U-Haul because this is a big wedding. Um, I'm probably spelling it wrong. Um, and let's say we need to charge, say that U-Haul is going to cost me $250. It's going to cost me an hour of my time on both ends to pick it up and return it and the hassle of having to deal with everything. So let's say we're going to charge $600 for that. And so it's going to add up all those fees and get you a subtotal right here of 63.4250. And then my sales tax here in Texas is 6.25%. So it's adding my sales tax. Actually, I want to make sure these are taxable because in Texas, all my um, fees are taxable. In some states, I'm not sure how it is in Georgia, Valerie, but in Texas, you have to charge tax on all of these services. So if you guys are in whatever state you're in, check with your you know local um, entity, your tax entity, and find out if you have to charge tax on these services. Because if you don't, you can uncheck these boxes and you'll see the tax amount went down. But because I'm in Texas, I need to make sure I'm charging tax for all of this. So I have to charge $396 in tax and I am gonna charge the client $6,738. So this is really nice because you can put in however you want to build out your um, additional fees. You can kind of build it here and make sure that it matches with what you're charging the client.
this is excellent. Um, of course, this is recorded, so you can come back and take a look at this, but feel free to screenshot this if you can now, because this is the difference between you being a profitable florist and you being burnt out and wanting to give up on, on this, the thing that you love, um, to Luann's earlier point. Um, as far as this piece, I really love how Luann said that you can decide what you want to cover on this. I think for me and the biggest takeaway for you guys is at least the top three things off rip are charging for transportation, setup and delivery, um, and then making sure that the taxes are in there. Because the thing is you, you are paying the taxes, whether it's immediately, quarterly, or later at the end of the year, the beginning of the year, you already are paying for some sort of transportation whether it's your own vehicle, whether it's a delivery company, you are already doing that. So throw that bad boy in there, setting up and tear down. Sis, we need to start looking at hiring a team. And when I mean hiring a team, maybe sourcing from a local staffing agency where you can pay $25 an hour or $15 an hour or whatever the case, this is the box to throw that fee in there. But the, the significant difference is what I want you all to pay attention to. $4,200 is not $6,700. If you send that invoice over for $4,200, you're going to take home $750. I'm just telling you that off rip because the thing is that your inability to charge your client doesn't mean these things aren't getting paid for. You're just putting the onus and the responsibility on the person who wants to have the event. You didn't ask them to have this party. They want to do it. So they're going to have to figure out a way to get the stuff to the property. They're going to have to figure out a way for these taxes to be paid. You've done your part and they will do theirs by taking care of these line items. But they're only take care of them if you add them. And please add them. And I've always had people ask me over the years of my business like, oh, can you can you not charge me sales tax? And I always used to say, well, I don't charge sales tax. I have to collect sales tax and I have to pay it to the government. <laughs> we're, we're not charging anyone sales tax. We're just passing it through. So if anybody asks you to get out of say, pay, you know, charging sales tax, you know, my answer is always like, nope, sorry, can't do it. Unless you have a, uh, you know, a nonprofit or you have a tax ID where I, you know, have copy of it, then I have to charge sales tax because I don't want to be the one that has to go back and deal with that later on. Um, and people will ask. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, you know, you're throwing this big party, but you don't want to pay tax, you know. Um, so don't be shy about just letting them know it's not something I'm charging. I'm just collecting it and passing it through. Uh, sure. I like using that phrase. <laughs> Delivery in U-Haul. I've had clients say, oh, that's so expensive. I'm like, OK, great. I'm located at 1040 Boulevard Street. You can pick it up between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Oh, 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 yeah. I don't have a car. And, oh, the water. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, okay. Well, then that'll be $600. Like which yeah. one? And I, and I, and I explain this as kindly as possible, but I have to let them know the reality of what's happening. Like if you have a flip, they'll say, oh, you know, my sister, my cousin actually no. like we perform the flips because it allows our team to be present, to be able to do this. We want your guests to enjoy themselves. So either you pay us or no flip happens. You know, like you have to give them the options that they understand that this isn't just cute. Like we're actually full engineers out here trying to keep their flowers from falling from the ceiling installation that they don't know how we got up there. Right. So this line, these line items compensate for that work to be done. Definitely. And I typically recommend, you know, I wouldn't break this out. I, in my experience, I like breaking out the designs um on a line item basis um but for my clients i've found that the more i kind of break out the fees they tend to start to pick at them so i typically i do it this way for my personal uh behind the scenes work but then this would all be added up and put into one line item fee for the client i wouldn't you know show it to them broken out just so y'all know that's that's kind of how i do it but you know, you can try what works best for you. I mean, I know some people will say, I don't like doing a strike. So they break out the strike fee at the end of the night and they say to their client, this is a very small wedding. If you return the vases to me the next day or the next week, then 
I don't have to come back and pick it up and you can save that little bit of money. But if it's a big wedding with lots of things going on, you know, you're going to have to go back and clean it up because typically it's not something that the family or whoever can handle. So I think it's important to just kind of think about this, making sure that, you know, when you're looking at, you know, this fee of the 1267 plus the labor fee that we have down here of the 718, you know, we're kind of adding those two together and going, okay, is that going to cover all my freelancers and all my time leading up to this wedding and on the wedding day? Is that covering all those costs and, you know, allowing me to like make a little bit of money off of that labor? Um, and then, you know, having the rest of the money as a profit. Um, so it's nice to kind of be able to see these numbers in real time as you're building your orders or as you're thinking about designs. Um, and this total summary page can really help kind of give you that picture of how it lays out before you even send it to the client. That way, you know, OK, I'm going to be in good shape and it is work. You know, it takes work to do this. But as we were talking about before, once we've built some of these events into the system, and we've done some of this work. If I look through and I want to find something similar to what I did, I can open up any one of these events and I can say, OK, this is what I did last time. Let me make a copy and start from there. So the first you know, season or two working with every stem, you're going to be building all these events. But then after that, you're going to just be kind of starting from something that you've already created. So it really helps save time in the long run. Um, and it helps you kind of build upon what you've done in the past. So a lot of our designers will say, oh, I was really overbuying on my greenery and I was really overbuying on certain things. This helps kind of train your brain to where you're like, okay, last time I had six bunches of greenery left over. I'm going to make sure that I cut back on that. And that, you know, I'm not spending so much on that. So it really does kind of help you in, in quite a few different ways. Um, but especially at the beginning of your business, really be able to see those numbers, building in all the costs of the designs, um, and then kind of making sure that you're you're actually making that profit that you want to make. So does anybody have any other questions for me about this or um, anything in general that we talked about tonight? I have one question. Um, Luann, if you could go back to that summary, mm -hmm. the profitability summary on that last mm -hmm. event. Sure. I just want to point something out. So right here, the quote is for 4225. Like you saw on the event details um, pop up, we're going to be charging the, the client like $6,500 or something like that. Including those line items ensures that this profit here these $3,200 are in your pocket, right? right. So yep. you can pay your mortgage. So you can pay your car off ahead of time. So you can pay for, for daytime care for your children. This is how people leave their jobs and have their events 100% just focused on their events. And even let's just say that you really maybe only want to take $2,500 home you can use those $1,200 to make that event better if you want to. You can use the $1,200 to hire an on-site photographer. You can use the $1,200 to hire a social media manager for three months. You can use the money to reinvest it into your business. You can find a space. You can get a pop-up. Y'all, I can go on and on and on and on and on. This session is so close to my heart and I'm so thankful that Luann took the time, y'all. Because this is we're past due the time to be making money in our businesses. Like overdue. I do not feel guilty at all for making the money that I need to do. Because if not, then I don't get to have this space for floors to work. I have to charge accordingly in order to be able to function in my, in my life. And I want you to really um, pay attention to those line items, like I said earlier, and your markup. Mark up your rentals, y'all. You have to mark up your rentals because though that's also um, a part of your business and what you're offering to the client. Um, but that's one thing that I wanted to point out. But if you have any questions for Luann, please, we'll be on for a few more minutes. Yeah. And to that, Valerie, I had somebody the other day that I was talking to who just joined every STEM. We did a demo and she signed up and she said, I don't really typically 
think about my rentals as any kind of a cost. I just think that they're pure profit. And I said, well, do you have a place where you keep them? And she said, oh yeah, I have a storage unit where I keep them. And I'm like, okay, well, you're paying a monthly rent for that storage unit and you're having to drive to that storage unit and drive back and you're having to clean them and you're having to... So even if you buy an item that you're going to use for you know many years, it still has a carrying cost. So that's why we say you want to mark up those items and enter them into the library as well. Um, so, you know, you can also kind of have some, you know, placeholders where if you're thinking about the cost of a flower or the cost of an item, switch over to this page. If say for this bridal bouquet, right now we have an item in here called bouquet supplies and the cost is $5 and it has a two times markup on it. So it's going to be $10. So my dollar store vase to transport the bouquet, a couple pins, some corsage tape. Those are $5 worth of cost and I'm going to charge the client $10 for it. Now, if this client said, I want beautiful uh, long tails of satin ribbon on my bouquet, then I don't have to necessarily make another item here, but I can go ahead and add additional supplies cost here. I can say, okay, I'm going to add $30 for um, that ribbon. And then I can see I'm a little bit over, I'm 26 cents over. Now, if this was a client of mine, I might be like, all right, 26 cents is okay in the whole scheme of things. Or I might go up here and say, you know, what could I get rid of? Maybe I could do 0.2 of a bunch instead of 0.25. And then I can see, okay, now I'm within my budget. And so it's very easy to kind of add those placeholders and those buffers to just make sure you know, we tend to really guess on the low end. And I think it's just our natural human tendency to kind of forget of what we're going to charge. So what I like to do, and it's not this way on these um, for some reason right now, because I probably just made this example, but you can take the um, supplies and you can move them. You can kind of drag and drop the flowers, the order of them. So I can put the bouquet supplies all the way at the very top. And then I can put my greenery and then I could put my focal flowers. And that way I'm building the recipe in my mind. I try my hardest every time to build my flower recipes. I start with my supplies. If it's an installation, I usually do supplies and then labor. And then I'll add the flowers because we all want to get to the sexy, beautiful flower part. And we forget about all the costs of the chicken wire and the plywood and the buckets and the, all that stuff. So if you're thinking about it, try to think about, OK, what's the like hardcore stuff that I need for the supplies and then get to the flowers. And that way we're not forgetting, because I can tell you so many of our designers uh, that use every stem have been like, oh, my gosh, I haven't been charging for any of these supplies. And it really can eat into your profit. Mm -hmm. I had one question. Yeah. Is, I'm not sure if we covered this. Is there a UI or a proposal draft or template that will send this to customers or something that we see? There is not something you would send this to the client for because this is really for behind the scenes for um, just for you to use in your business. But you can export um, the recipes in a couple of different formats. Um, and so there's, um, you can export it to PDF or you can export it to Excel. And, um, it's really nice because this works, um, for, you know, processing the flowers, doing the designs, making the designs on site if you're doing a wedding. Um, but, um, really for like an invoice or a, um, proposal, visual proposal, most of our clients either use HoneyBook or they use Canva for that to kind of create the mood board or the proposal. Got it. Okay. All right. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of works in tandem with those. I can show you one of the, the newest recipe export that we created is really cool because you can see the recipe for each design individually. So when you go to this PDF, it'll give you kind of a breakout of all the designs that you're making for that event or for that whatever event it is, and how many of each you're going to be making. So that way, when you go to pack everything up and get it out the door, you have this checklist to kind of make sure you're packing all your designs. 
And then there's some places for notes. And then each design gets its own recipe with how many flowers go into that recipe. So it's really nice and clean. If you have a new freelancer or somebody who's just helping you out as an assistant, maybe it's a family friend or something like that. They don't know anything about flowers. We've all had those people come and help us in our businesses. You can say, okay, just get a vase and put, you know, three stems of this greenery, a little bit of this greenery, six stems of this flower, you know, and then they can start pulling those flowers for you and prepping it. And then you can make the designs. Um, and so if it was something like bouquets or corsages, if there are multiple of them, you're going to see how much you need for one recipe and then how much you need for all of the recipes. So there's a couple different formats, which you can export the information to make it really user friendly for you and your team when you're actually doing the design work. Um, does anybody have any other questions about how this works or anything about recipe building or anything like that? Yes, I have a question. So do you have like a standard template that might come with this, your every pricing? Um, a standard template for pricing? Yes. Like just a standard template, like the one that you had for, um, your bridal. Cause I like that one that you had aligned out. I didn't know if it was like a standard that comes with it sometimes. Yeah, I do have, I have a couple of um, blank templates, like example templates. Um, and so it comes with um, one example wedding template, and then it comes with a couple other templates. But if there was something in here that you really liked that you wanted to see, I can always take um, an event that I had, like, the, was it the one with like the generic flowers? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So the, um, the one with the minimums for weddings. Yep. That's like it. This one. Yeah. Yes. I could actually, um, like dump that into your account and okay. you could have a copy of it. Yeah. So I do that a lot for clients. Like we'll sit down and we'll go through something like this and build kind of an example and then they'll have it to use for the future. Um, so yeah, if you ever want something like that, I'm happy to share that kind of a, a layout, you know, cause it just helps just give you something to kind of start from. And then, um, I can't, I don't remember is Lauren with full bloom by Lauren. Is she in, in the group Valerie? She is. Oh, I think you're on mute. Oh, I didn't hear you. Are you on mute Valerie? Yeah, I was talking to my <laughs> Yes, Lauren is in Atlanta. She's not too far from here. She's full blown by Lauren. Yeah, so she so she and she has an assistant named Wendy. And Wendy and I went through all of this together one day and Lauren and I Wendy got Lauren on board. We got it all figured out and I actually went into their account and I put in some examples for just certain prices with certain events and they said it was super helpful. So if anybody in this group would like to do that, if you want to join every stem and I can put in some examples based on your kind of business that would be helpful for you. I'm happy to do that to get you started. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, well, we're going to wrap up. I'm going to um, wrap it up. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, Luann is here if you have any other questions. Um, and you can also email me if you have any questions, but thanks for being here and have a good night.